position. That's about good. I think so. Let's see. YouTube is live. That's good. Look at that. Both live at the same time. Do Twitch, I guess. Check chat. Ooh. I think I want to see the YouTube one came through and then come through here. Okay, that's weird. Change chat settings real quick. So like a timeout? I thought timeout. I delay. Let's go to what? 60 seconds time delay. Okay. Do a six now. Let's do a hundred. Okay, cool. So, welcome to the stream. We're gonna go over the Night Fury or Squirrel Acorn FPGA or Light Fury, whatever floats your boat. These are different M.2 FPGAs, all kind of the same form factor. Um, they either have they have uh, different speed bins of the uh, of the FPGA. So like um, Intel processor, you have the i3, i5, i7, i9. With FPGAs, there's also different speed bins, and there's um, it was one, two, and three higher the better. Um, and there's also different sizes: 100 k lut, 200 k lut. Some of them have uh, 256 uh, megabyte DDR, 512 megabyte, and one gig gigabyte DDR. Mine, the one I'll be demoing in the video right here, that's an Acorn 215 Plus. So that's a 200 K LUT speed grade three with one gig of DDR. So it's like kind of the top end one. Um, you can't really buy them new. You can find them on eBay. Could find them on eBay. They're kind of a hard thing to find these days. But the Night Fury 2 in the picture, that's a 200 K speed grade two, well, I think 512 megabytes of DDR for $150. Pretty good deal, um, but if you find a squirrel on eBay, um, go for it. It's a, it's, it's a much, you can get a much better price on it. So today we're gonna look at um, the PCIe, look at uh, a few different examples um, and how that works with the Raspberry Pi and this Compute Blade system. So we're gonna look at uh, uh, XDMA streaming, XDMA memory mapped, Litex, and, and kind of a very simple, Axie Light memory map interface for PCIe. And so our goal is to try to do, do as much as we can today, just going through from scratch, how you build the design, how you work on it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what our, our goal is going to be. Um, the picture is from Uptime Labs. Um, it was posted um, on Twitter. I like the picture, so I'm using that as the background. But well, let's go ahead and um, get going and just build these FPGA PCIe designs from scratch um, and see what they, how they interact with the XDMA driver on the Raspberry Pi, which I should probably, I'll have a GitHub. I'll be, I need to have a GitHub repository of this by Tuesday. So I'll post it on this or maybe a later video. We'll go over the repository or something like that. Okay, so let's get started. Um, doo -doo. So we're gonna start here. Um, let me move this guy back up into the corner. Hopefully you don't need to see anything in that area. So we're going to start by just creating a project from scratch. Um, so well, yeah, we'll do this in the blade and we're going to do call it XDMA stream, XDMA stream zero zero zero. Meaning we're doing the streaming interface. Um, we're going to pick a part. Uh, so we're going to do the Arctic 7 family package. It's which package is it? So I have that listed here, right here. Let's look at this one. Um, so the package we have the list here, uh, is the FBG 484. So we're going to go package FBG 484. We're going to do speed, uh, 
speed rate of three for this one, and that's the FPGA we're going to be targeting. If you have a Night Fury, you'll be targeting the speed rate two instead. I should probably, let me just check that quick. Hey, meet the vlogs. Okay, um, so let's keep walking forward. Um, so we have the, th have the project. So what we want to do is we want to first um, do the block diagram in this situation. Um, the block diagram is kind of critical for using Xanax's XDMA uh, solution. You don't have to use their solution. There's a hardened PCIe block here. There's other ways to implement it. Um, the XDMA gives you the best performance kind of easily out of the box. Just require you using their core driver and whatnot. But um, it's good for doing demos and whatnot. Um, but let's go ahead and run this. We are going to do... What's the best way? We want to do subsystem IP level, subsystem level, IP level. I think it subsystem level it kind of breaks down to different sub things. So let's do the IP level. We're going to do one lane because the Raspberry Pi only supports one lane. So we're only going to do one lane. And we're going to do, I think, it's a, let's see, Raspberry Pi, um, DM4 PCIe. What, 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 what was this? Yeah, Jeff Gearling. That's would be great. Um, PCIe, right? We only one lane, but what gen is it? What gen? Um, the Raspberry Pi or PCIe gen? What? Um, give me, give me the gen. Okay, gen two. If I could give it. Okay, so we're gonna do gen two. Um, we're going to do Axie stream first. Um, we're just going to do one channel, right? Okay. Uh, so, this is great. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to our IP. So we go to our sources, we go to our IP. Um, libraries. Okay, I guess we'll click this. We're going to say open IP design. Um, specify location, we're going to be doing the Axie stream example. So we're going to look at what they do for their example stream. This should give us a working block diagram that um, should use the XDMA driver. Has anyone... Um, done a uh, block diagram XDMA before. Um, this is, hopefully this example design is just an easy way to get something up and running quickly. I won't worry about the DER today, probably just do some example designs and just run through them. So I'm trying to mostly use the GUI tools. You can script this type of work very easily um, using Tickle and interacting with the tools without the GUI. Um, the GUI is just a good way to learn how to do uh, prototyping pretty quickly. If you're just wanting to explore the different options, understand what the system is doing, um, it works very well. Okay, so we have DMI um, streaming option. Um, if we like if we double click on this we should see what options we were put in here um so yeah this is probably a good thing to actually walk through real quick so um we have a clock uh actually stream reference clock pcie boom very simple stuff 
um, PCIe ID. This is useful. This is what will appear when you do LSPCI. Um, we're not doing any fancy buses. I should probably read up what that does. I'm not too familiar. Um, I don't think there's anything in here that's terribly important. There is that, but that's not important. It may. Okay, so yeah, this is using the Axie stream. So um, we look at the constraint file, right? It has a very simple constraint um, where we have ref clock, system clock is. So what ports do we have? Let's see. If we go to the top level here, um, we have the lanes, which is one. We have a system clock and a system reset. Um, let's also do, we want to do output. There's another PCI signal um, on the system that's important. Um, do here, if we go here, there is a, in the PCIe section to do, there is a, clock request so let's go ahead and um do a clock reset our clock reset here so we're going to call that all that yeah you clock set and where's like the first assigns here we have system and we can just do a very simple sign Zero, right? Uh, zero. Okay. Um, so now we're going to run synthesis and then actually, no, I guess we could open the elaborate design and just look at where these are coming from and then just change them. Okay. So let us open the elaborate design. So now we're going to look at the pinout and we're going to change the pinout, build the design, and hopefully get running on the system. Um, I want to check the Night Fury. So let's go look at the Night Fury. Uh, Night Fury. Get up real quick. Check something here. So we have Night Fury. We're going to go to hardware. I want to go to projects, sample projects, and project zero. A night fury two. So we're gonna to go to the project versus rates. I think it's under normal. Uh no, I think it's going to be actually under early. So under early, these are at A10. Let's go see if we have A10 and A6. This opens the elaborated design. Well, hello, we have uh, Rainer Schmidt and um, zero HP. Yeah, um, the Axie DMA is uh, very big for the Night Fury, or for the Night Fury 2. So Night Fury 2, you have about 400k LUTs. That, that's true, but we're only using lane zero. Um, the Raspberry Pi only supports one lane, so we want to make sure that one lane matches. And even though it, it complains, but yeah, we should be able to match that one lane. We may have to um, make sure the constraint doesn't overwrite it. But that's a good point, yeah. That's why they did the early constraint. So we would have to create a constraint, make it an early file, and kind of follow their um, system. Um, I don't, because we're doing the Y7 here. So yeah, we would have to probably set that pro property in um, because it looks like this should be lane zero in my mind. If they have lane three. But yeah, let's go figure out what's happening. I feel like, oh, they're running, okay, running that. 
running the out of context real quick. Hopefully that finishes soon. Yeah, we can, as soon as this is done, it should open the library design and we should be able to check out what's happening. And we can look at what the defaults are set for the system. I wonder if we'll be able to do a single lane because I know if we look at the um, let's see if we look at the what the Arctic Seven PCIe right, we'll have a product page the integrated PCIe thing. Look at the documentation real quick here. Did you do user guides? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that comment is. So we have a hardened PCIe block here. This isn't what normally in FPGA you would have a soft core. So this is a hard core. We need to figure out what is important about that, um, how that hard core is connected to the pinout. We're still working. Um, so it's probably going to be up in the begin beginning somewhere. We have one lane, but there should be something where it talks about the. Uh, talks about the appropriate pinout. I feel like it should have been earlier, where. There being a number of lanes, you can see. Okay, we have something about the pinout. Should be here somewhere. YouTube is hating how fast I am changing the screen. Well, I'm sorry that um. We're walking through a uh, 400 page. Okay, time to time to uh, Google or search for this um, support. Okay, six two. This is what we want. Okay, um, so we have the 484. No, where's there's the Arctic? They have the Arctic. I swear we're using this block, and I think that's the package. Maybe they're not talking about the Arctic device. Do they have a 200 key anywhere? Maybe I'm crazy and it's not actually a hardened core. Well, it looks like we can put it on anything we want. Okay. Uh, so, back here, we finish this. So, if we close this, we are. Still elaborating the design. Okay, good, good. We're getting close. Yes, correct. It's an RTX 200T. I thought it was an integrated. I, I swear it was supposed to be in here. Um, does the RTX 7? I, I was under the assumption that it. Um, Thought it was a hardened core. Does it not appear on? Yeah, it supports the Arctic Seven. So I wonder why the documentation didn't talk about it. That one. The user guides. Yeah, hmm, interesting. Okay, so we're here. Let's see what we are doing. So we have a bunch of ports. Um, ran them all. Okay, it doesn't look like it's assigned this one yet. But I'm pretty sure there's something in the. So if we go to IP sources, right? There should be XDC. 
physical constraints is it not assigned anywhere uh i think it's this period 10. why is this not constrained so far oh okay We're, we got to go down deeper we got to go to the pci ip right here and do, 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 do. okay i think it's this one okay so pcie right here we have location x7 okay um so if we go back to um night fury x7 okay cool lane zero is in the right location lane zero is x07 so it's in the light right location PCIe block. So we are good. Okay, now let's just fix the other ones. Uh, um, okay, we go to our package real quick. Um, we're good on those ports. Those ports should be good. For the reset, our reset in PCI reset, it should be J133. So we're going to go to package bin, J1. We click that, boom, we see J1 right there, and we're going to say it's a uh, LVMOS 33, 3.3 volts. Okay, um, PCIe out, our required out, low, it's going to be G1, G1. And once again, I feel this is LVCMOS uh, 33 probably, right, right, um, yes. Next, we need to clock in. That's going to be F6 on the P, right? Cool. Doesn't clock in, it's going to be F6. Look at that, it even knows. Um, so we're going to save this. Uh, I guess we'll update. Uh, let's create a new one, we'll call it top. Um, okay. Let's, so if we go back to hierarchy, we had this constraint right here. Um, where it was driving these things. I think that would work. Um, Config voltage 3.3. See, do they have a config voltage listed anywhere? Normal. Have any config voltage config mode right here? That's what. Go grab all this stuff as well. Okay, and what else did we have here? I, I think that's, that's good. This is good. I think we can set that on this document as well. Um, and we're going to disable file here. And I want to make this properties. There's like an early processing order early load okay so i think we're good to generate the bit file um oh, did, oh that did not go through okay there we go reload Okay, I think that's good. So let's go ahead and generate the bitstream. Hey, Herm, thank you for joining us.
interesting streaming to two different services at once. Okay, so here comes the fun process of uh, watching a bitstream be generated, right, guys? This is a great thing to do live to slowly watch the tools go through synthesis, placement, and routing. We can we instead of you know watching these wonderful logs. Looks like sense is actually almost done. Um, let us go look at the XDMA driver, right? So there's a Raspberry Pi XDMA driver. I have it over on a Discord chat. Um, so let me go find that real quick. Okay. Okay, so. Let me just, let's just click the link. There we go. So here is a Raspberry Pi version of the PCIe driver. And we actually go up here um, to describe the two main changes they did to get it working on the Raspberry Pi. So far it's worked great. So um, we have this loaded up onto our Raspberry Pi. And um, let me see real quick. I actually have my other ver my other design here that is um, XDMA. So we see it. Um, so let's load it. So I think we go into tests. Um, XDMA test. No, I think it's uh, Linux. Right. Oh, is this the right one? I think I'm supposed to be going to XDMA. Yeah, that's what we want. We're going to this one. Um, test. We're gonna do a uh, load driver. Booted boot. Um. Okay, let's let's go into the driver. XDMA. Yeah. Pseudo make. So, not sure which version I have loaded. We might have to do a reboot after this to get it all up and running. Um, so sudo lspci.pc. Still not loaded. We may have to do a reset. Actually, probably I need to you know actually load something in here. Okay, um, let's go ahead and open the hardware manager while this finishes. We're gonna open the target. And we're going to uh, load an existing design that I know works. Let me go up one yeah, here. I know this design works. Hmm. Probably done a reboot. <laughs> the device is not happy now. Hmm. Let me see if I can ping the Pi from a uh, different way. Yeah, look like we killed the Pi. Okay, we good? We good? Nope. Nope. Okay, let's do a power cycle of the full Pi. Down we go. Back up. Okay. Um, let's see. Dash P that just keeps going. Okay, we'll let that go and we'll reprogram it. I mean, this one's almost done. We might just do that one next. I should probably. So the issue is I was changing the axi or not the the PCI bar address widths between um runs, and this is not a good thing. You want to PCIe is not hot plug and play, right? So it's not, you can't dynamically change your PCIe device. You can't pull out a GPU, plug in a GPU during operation, expect it to work correctly, especially if it's like completely different. Um, so um, you need to reboot the Linux image and have the system re enumerate. It's called the enumeration of the PCIe bus. You need to re enumerate the PCIe bus when you change it. If in your FPGA, if you're doing minor changes and your PCI 
bar address, if vendor device ID is identical, you can just add it real quick. You can like remove an ad from the PCIe bus on Linux easily. But if you change vendor device ID or change number of address bars or the width of the address bars, you will break the Linux kernel. Good example. Okay, so this is, okay, we already generated. So let's go ahead and just use this one. Um, so we're going to program this one with, we're gonna go to the actually stream example, go to runs, go to implementation. We're gonna do the bit, program the bit. And now, before we do something stupid, we're going to do a stupid reboot now. And this will cause the Linux image to shut down, re go to the BIOS stage again, and then re enumerate the PCIe bus. Which is good. Yeah, that's great. Um, that that they call that tandem or tandem uh, is it tandem boot up or partial reconfiguration. It's a great way once you have like a real product or a real design going. Um, JTAG is really just for um, some simple prototyping and to uh, do a recovery in case you brick your flash or something like that and the image gets corrupted. Um, so the issue is that sometimes you, you, you have to change the PCIe setting. So a lot of times I'll play around with like a very a simple, a simple static image and to get everything going correctly. Okay, so we're here. Let's do LSPCC. Well, that's not good. So... So our PCIe device is not running. Hmm. Okay, so let's go try a real, let's go try that other design real quick. And we can think about maybe it's running off a different bus. Like we don't know which lane is actually connected and communicating correctly. Um, programs. I don't have an LED to tell if the clock is going. Maybe we could hook up, um, Block. Maybe we have to do four lanes. I don't know which lane is actually connected. Um, I mean, so let's let's see real quick. Why? Well, let's get it rebooted real quick. So we're gonna go back to use this one. Program that one. Reboot the device. back to this in a second so back to here we were so we assumed that this was channel one but let's go look at the hardware um the pdf right here let's go look at the m.2 connection right Pages flash so the DDR three M dot two. Okay, you see what I'm seeing here? It is totally not on that lane. It's on number two. That that's that's why okay so their pinout is weird but like we so we need to use this and we had the um the clock request zero and um, the reset coming out here okay so looking at this we need to do mgt p2 okay so let's go ahead and open the implemented design figure out what that has to be and then we'll assign it to our early uh, document. Okay. 
I also missed that alert. So wh whoever thanks for uh, following, hopefully. Um, looks like I had a Twitch follower added. Not sure about YouTube. Um, but thanks. I, I wish I could. Okay, I have that right here. Yeah. Zero HP has subscribed on YouTube. Thanks. So what we want here is we want to do lane two, the MGTP lane two, our um, B, A10, A6, which should be what I wanted. Is that not working out? Okay, we will, let's investigate. Okay, so this is MGT clock 0216. That looks correct. And then we want these. I guess we could look at the, I mean, I can't, I don't have the compute blade uh, schematic. So we want two. Is that what this is? It's three. Why is it three? Okay, this is on the wrong one. Yes, it's on the wrong one. So, um, B10 and A6. Okay, this should be correct. We're going to save it to our early uh, constraint. Um, pad Y13. Is that this? Oh, is there I'm trying to figure out what grid this is? So but constraint file was affected. <laughs> uh, um, so let's copy and paste what they have in that uh, constraint file right here. Early constraints, I want this. And we're gonna do that in our early constraints. Okay, we're gonna put that up top, right? Um, and then we need to go grab what that is supposed to be. So we need to go synthesis this guy right here and okay that should be correct the implementation's out of date so let's rerun bitstream generation fix that issue I have to double check it afterwards. Okay, so this guy is rebooted. This one has a working one in it, hopefully, right? Um, so let's just head into root. Um, I might leave root. We'll see. Okay, it's working. Let's uh, check. Um, XDM is loaded. So let's, um, if we exit this. So if we ls slash dev, we now have on the right side that none of you can see because of the chat. Yes, we are currently Twitch chat. So how are you programming the FPJ? Currently we have JTAG. Um, let me see. If you can see this in the camera, there is a Digilent HS2 JTAG module. I built the own I built that connector with some of the parts. So we have a JTAG uh, going for that device. Okay, so let's go do a performance test. So we're gonna to go to XDMA. So there should be a performance hardware count. So we'll just, this is a good one. Um, and we're just gonna do one channel each. Cannot open 
Okay. Pseudo bang bang that. Okay, so we see the bit rate right here. So this, as I assume, is the uh, megabit rate or the gigabit rate. Um, we're about at 200 megabits, 200 megabits, 200 megabits. So <laughs> good question, Q. Um, besides get good, what is a good resources? Um, in all honesty, it's a lot of just reading the vendor documentation, going through the vendor tutorials, and then ripping them apart. You, you have the vendor tutorial, have the vendor documentation. You go through the tutorial, they'll give you some very simple scripts. And then you have to dig down to the scripts and figure out what they're doing. Um, I think for me, it was just playing around with a block diagram, trying different configurations, playing around with the buses, figuring that out. But that's, that's Xilinx vendor specific. HDL design. Um, I find reviewing HDL really good. You can look at other people's designs on uh, GitHub. But Besides taking like a university course, um, there's not terribly good places of structure. There's Nanland. Nanland has a, I assume, a pretty good tutorial. I haven't really walked through it, um, but he does work through different things. There are some video games that kind of work on digital system design level skills. Senzin IO. Um, there's that other one I was playing recently. So there's some video games that can help you kind of those skills. There's some online classes. <laughs> yeah reading so much documentation the uh, mpsoc technical reference manual is huge okay um how are we doing here we're in the route design hopefully this one works this time um we might be able to look at the pin out somewhere Reports. Okay, cool. Um, report IO. What I want. Okay, cool. This is what I want. It put it on the other one. Is this the new one? I think this is a new one. Oh, well, maybe I didn't change the name. What's the name they use for the IO? Um, right, we need a, that, the name of it. We go to the top. Didn't think, I don't think I named it correctly. Okay, we need exp. The, it's PC, PCI, so no, there's no E, and it needs that. XP, XP, that what we need. Um, cancel. I don't trust you. Okay. Um, let us... Hmm. Okay. Don't make us run through things again, but that shouldn't be too bad. Ugh. Okay. Great trying to debug things. Um, yeah, so like... Let's let's while we were waiting, let's go check out what Nanland has for a uh, FPGA tutorial. We can just walk through his uh, lesson plan. Um, FPJ. Okay, so FPJ lessons, gate, flip flop, synthesizable, non synthesizable, propagation code. Okay, so that's that's very basic, right? Like, um, that's some very good less basic lessons. Test bench, some interesting things. Um, yeah, but these still seem very simple. Do we have uh, that? Looks like actual training course. 
Um, there's some basic things to look at. We probably did the similar thing there. Okay, is there any other good classes besides docking Reddit, reading projects? I enjoy Pink. Um, Pink, Pink is a fun system where you have kind of like a processor running Linux in a Python interface, but still very hard to figure out how the hardware works. Um, we go to support, right? We go to no, where is the? Uh, there's a documentation right here pink documentation like you go here and you could you could read about how to do your own overlay um but it's not easy where is it overlay design okay mythology do and they kind of talk about different things and how to do it oh there's an overlay tutorial or you place down IP and you get working with it. So this is this could be useful. Um, learning how to use pink, the zinc, and whatnot. It'll be a, it'd be really hard at first. You gotta read a lot of documentation and go through a lot of work to get through it. I am currently looking at what the Avenant ZU board. So I have this on order. I should get it in like two weeks. I should be able to run pink on it. Um, so this is a much better uh, processor. It's a quad core A53, dual core R5, um, one can be a DDR, and it has about I think 50k LUTs, about about 80k LUTs of FPGA fabric, and then it has scissor G ports, which I can do a lot of fun stuff with. Um, but this board's affordable for what it is. Um, but I'll I'll do a review of it in a few weeks, and we can I can look. Uh, see how it really works but it should have pink working on it if not someone will have pink working on it fairly soon um but yeah it'd be an interesting part so yeah nanland pink cheap dev boards well this is a this is kind of a mid-class de a hobby dev board not as cheap as like the icebreaker or um butter stick um let's see lattice butter Right here, this one's also oh, that one's that's even more expensive. Probably has. How are we doing? We get we got eighty five k LUTs, so similar LUTs, two gigabit DDR. This one was one gigabyte, right? One gigabyte, so more DDR than that guy. Um, it has a Sigi ports as well, so this is probably a very similar board when it comes to Sigi. Should probably look at this. Are these all standard Sigi ports? Oh, they do have a transceiver one. Ooh, should look at getting this board. A scissor G breakout. They have a scissor G breakout. Beautiful. Um, I should see what other. Okay, let's. I want to. Go back to Lattice Butter Stick. Where's the website for this? Okay. Um, where is the website? Um, where's the Scissor G? Any Scissor G ports they have for it? I don't see any Scissor G. Okay. Uh, it's types. Okay, so they just takes you here, which is. I, I like this, but it's not terribly useful peripherals. Um, yeah, so they don't really give you much except for that guy. Um, browse our group buys. Or um, there a search. Just want a search fu function. Oh well. Cool. I'll, I'll look at that. Um, maybe the group gets has uh, other things besides that. Okay, that was Vivado doing. Vivado, we built. Okay, let's go look at our IO placement, right? Um, still not there. The name is this is this is ten ten. Okay. 
So let's open implement design and figure out why it's not moving. I may have to go look at what I did in my other. Um, static design constraints early. And that's why I just listed it as. I did comment that out. Hmm. Did we not? Okay. I want to move this to the A10 one. A6. Okay. We save. What actually changed? Is that not what is written here? You say express. Okay, um, something is overriding my constraints. I'm angry about that. Thought I put the early constraint on here. Properties. That's early. Okay, um, where is the log uh, PCI? Okay, let's hunt this down real quick. We're going to do some live debug. I think we want to do what? EXP? Nope. Okay, implementation. ECIE, EX. Is that not what the pin is called? ECI, EXP. EI. Um, what about we did up that FTC? Looks like that one is done first. Okay, I'm going to have to let's do synthesis and then open the synthesized design. Yeah, that's kind of annoying when um, you have the constraints messing with you. What could we do? We have these listed as expected. Maybe we can't. Remember, we were looking at this guy right here. And if you do lane zero, you have to do it in the third one. 
we may have to do two lanes to get it up and running properly. That's going to be annoying to rewrite. Yeah. Okay, so zero HP. I missed some of your recent things. But yeah, the Ultra 96 is a great product. I just I just don't like the IO on it. Right. And there's the V2 one that Avnet's selling. It is more expensive. I just I just don't like the IO. There's not the Sysergy ports have really awesome like IO options. Um let's see what the Avnet one. Is there anything different about the Avnet one? Um, yeah, none in stock. Ooh. Industry grade one. Um, what's the lead time? 52 weeks. <laughs> yeah, not getting that in time. Okay, Bob Smun on Twitch also had a question about, is it possible for that JTAG cable to be attached to the USB on the compute blade so to have it self-contained? Yes. Um, so I can plug... Okay, so we see this. I can plug this into the uh, Raspberry Pi. Let, let's do this. This is a fun little experiment. Okay, so let's do this real quick for Bob. Um, sorry, Bob, I was distracted and get to your thing earlier. So here, right, so we do D message tail. We now have the FTDI chip self-contained within the Raspberry Pi. And um, it might have deleted. OK, so let's So if we go to open FPGA loader. You do um, right here. And we're going to copy this. Um, paste at home and get blown. And what's my instructions for input usage? There's like, uh, wait a minute. Was there other ways to do this that didn't require building? I don't think. Okay, cool. I can just, right here. Uh, Ubuntu, you might have to uh, grab that. I don't need any of those. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do these those installing so we can do the open fpga loader i can demonstrate that real quick um to do okay so i think there's an issue that we may have to do a two lane one Yeah, it's not liking that. Um, and if we, okay, if we save that, okay, so we're going to try this from the tickle perspective, okay? So I have a design here, let us off design. We're going to try to do this via tickle because um, I wonder if it's going to be reassigned at some stage. Yeah, so uh, I think you're right, your HP. The V2 of the Ultra 96 didn't change. Okay, now we're going to do, let's just make sure, fill an A10. Okay, let's place. Design. So the place design, if it's unhappy, okay, there's that warning. Let's go up here. Um, those are just RAMs. Are there any other warnings? Messages. Um, this size design. Okay, we'll just go back here. We should also be able to see how the design is being placed right now. It 
may not be happy when he does the DRC check. <coughs> okay. IO ports. It's still where we want them. Okay. Now if I route the design. And then we'll want to do an IO report. Just to make sure the tools haven't redone anything. After that, into the background. Okay, but if we go here, we should shoot the device. And this. Okay, here's our PCIe block. Is there anything about the I.O.? I'm thinking we're going to have to do a two-lane one to get this to work properly, which is... Uh, sorry to disappoint um, potential viewers that we're going to have to look uh, regenerate the whole design, but that's kind of the joys of doing live FPGA development. Okay, back to open FPGA loader. Okay, let's go ahead and cd into open FPGA loader. Um, I think he, no, the next instruction, build directory, and then, okay. Make directory build, build, uh, cmake, dot, dot. United sudo app, so cmake. Weird. Must have died on one of those. Okay, let's just do that one. Is that what it was called here? Where is it? Maybe it's cap sensitive. Okay. Okay. Um so we have routed design. Now, uh, report IO. IO. Sorry, package. Okay, it's assigned. So we're going to write bitstream and it may yell at us. Okay, um, first, where are we? Um, that's a fine location. Okay, so let us uh, write. Bitstream. Um, lane two. Stop it. We're going through a stage of DRC checks, and it may be angry that our PCIe is on the wrong DRC. But I just made sure it's on the right one. Okay, it's creating the bitmap. Yay! Maybe this will actually work. Let us, uh, we're gonna still work on the open FPGA loader. I guess we can try to get it working with the open FPGA loader and see how it works. Okay, and then we'll do what CMake dash dash build. Oh, right, the, the CMake dash builds. Yes. Oh, lib b lib f t i l lib f t i l okay what one were you unhappy about okay why it's working on that 
back to this guy. Play around. Um, so you are not able to... Uh, what was it? The lib. Arm. Okay, and he said that not installed, we're good. Okay, let us um, go to our hardware and program lane two. <laughs> okay, so you make build done. Oh, sorry. CMake jet up. And then we do CMake dash dash build and build it. Then we boot, demonstrate that this bit that works, and then program it over. And that might be. Then we'll just try to do a stream example, I guess, and call that good. Okay, any questions? Hopefully, I'm not Bob. I'm not sure if you're still watching or anyone else is still watching, but we still can talk about. Any other, you know, PCIe stuff for the um, getting this device working? Okay, so we got the stream hopefully building correctly. Just a pain to get that. It was a pain to, you know, get the synthesis to be happy. I guess it returned to an unfamiliar design, right? Hmm. I figure out a better way to guarantee that works. Okay. Um, what else? Didn't like that. Are there any exceptions? Well, there's no art fixes. Okay, so it says the Artix ones are considered the same as Intex. Oh, they really say it. Okay, so this one doesn't provide, provide much information about the Artix version. Okay, I'm still running a little bit. So. I guess I could just write my own script to synthesize the design and build it, move those things. Seems kind of pain. <coughs> I'm curious if it's, I'm half expecting for this to break. But we decided to build something in the background while we do it. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, okay. Oh. Mm. Mm. Anyone have any question? <laughs> to fill the void of why we wait for this to finish. Hmm. 
can't change. I shouldn't even do the LSP super yet. Okay, is there anything documentation wise we need more for installing this? Yep, that should be good. Okay, we can do that after. I guess we can do sudo make install and then go on. So close. What to do? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, um, Night Fury should ship fairly fast. Hmm. That's a good question. So, if I pull up um, this device right here, where are our MG MGT lanes? So, you're saying... Has kind of So we're looking for the IO. I guess we could go this the fun way, right? We can go to package here, the F4. See where this is coming from. Okay, it's going through the GTBY. The GTBY is somehow connected to the uh, the PCIe core. Maybe it's where. Where's the PCIe core? Probably going through some of these LUTs. Hmm. Okay. We're good here. Let's do sudo make install real quick and then reboot and see if our system works. Um, sudo reboot now. Hey! Thanks, Kobe Tang, for uh, following. Okay, so you want to go to my early... Oh, to the pipe lane. Okay, so... Pipe... So you're saying the pipeline here? We have the data. Yeah. That's the lane we want. I think it ended up it, it it got all the checks right. I don't think we had any major errors pop up. Oh, okay, here we go. Let's see if we have any. Yeah, I didn't really fail any DRC. Interesting. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh. 
Okay, we're up and running. Okay, let's see. You might have to. So you're talking about. I did. I did follow the example, and it didn't seem to work. Okay, we're good. That's. So I forced it. I'll have to play around with how to get the uh, XTC files to behave properly, but it's connected. And that's different than what we had before. Um, okay, so let's go try a performance test. This is a stream interface, so we should have um, sudo perform hardware on one. See, this is any faster of a stream interface. It doesn't like stream interface. Just, just check if it works. I don't really trust the performance to actually be correct. But at least it's happy and communicating. I should see if it's uh, one lane. Yeah, we should, we should do that too. Kill this pseudo. So, so we do lspci dash vvv. There's a links control, a link status here. So, in this situation, we're not going down. So, the one lane is working. Okay, so. Okay, I think we need a size. Let me see if I can do. I can what, like 1020? 1020, 1021, something like that? Okay, let's set uh, at the DMA. DMA. I should do. Okay. Um, channel pairs. <clears throat> so. Zero. Okay, it seems to be happy. Um, the perf test didn't really work well on this example. I'm not sure why, but it seems to be working. We're able to read and write, and values work just fine. So if we do, we can do four counts, right? And um, four uh, ninety six. Um, if we go like what? Um, so in the data pool, what do we have? Okay, I'll go back into data, what we got here. I uh, did not. Uh, okay, looks like I uh, killed something real quick. <laughs> Let me grab that information real quick. Um, I was too hasty in deleting things. Okay. Um, I need to exit and come back in. The SSH working. Okay. Test data. 
closed. I'm running to. Okay, it says an average bandwidth, like nine. I don't think it's nine gigahertz. Data read issue. More of the stream interface just wasn't a good example. Um, yeah, let's load up the other one. I want to look at something, and then we'll probably I'm going to examine the other one, but we'll probably have to end it there for the day. So let's go back to this one. It's based off the example design. I guess I might just have to build from the example design. Yeah, try and do something from scratch. Okay, so we're going to do a pseudo reboot. <laughs> okay, I want to see what the the re, the the real example design looks like. Hmm. I have to do the four lanes. Like a, a good stream example. Okay, great. Okay. Hey. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's just check real quick. Good. Um, we're loaded. Okay, sudo run test. Okay, so it's happy with that and it sees its memory mapped. Okay, so if we do lspc, well, we gotta do sudo lspc v. Um, Okay, so this talks about it being with four and whatnot, and the status is that we're only with one and we're downgraded. Okay, so we did get it working um, with one lane. A little bit of a pain. Might as well just map it for four lanes in this situation. Um, I wish... I don't know what that average bandwidth at the end is supposed to be. Okay, we got, I want to get a streaming example working, but maybe we'll just do the DMA example first. Um, let's see. I do have the Lightx one. We can see if we can get the Lightx one working. Okay, so we go here. Let me just try it real quick. Um, I have a bit file, and let's try that bit file. Um, okay, so we're going to try another bit file. I want to try the Lightx one. I have it located under up acorn, um, Lightx or Lightcorn, where <clears throat> uh, I guess we'll just do the bit and then we'll reboot, um, the pi. Oh. Curious what that says. Then we can try to get the LightX one working and then run a test. Okay, cool. Um, so going in here. Go to LCI. Okay. Um, we're doing, it looks like a generic Xilinx memory controller. Um, these are just four lanes. Okay, so let's go try the uh, Lightx driver. Get into the kernel. Uh, 
Pluto. Bang, bang. Might need to remove the XDMA one. Mm. Well, it's not happy. Oh, we might have just, you know, have to end with a sad... Yeah. Come on, you still there? Nope. Killed it. Yay. I'll have to figure out how to get the Lydex design working on here. Okay. So we're probably going to call that the end of the stream for tonight. Um, so I want to get an example, right? Try to do a minimal DMA memory map example, DMA streaming example, light example, and an Axi light example for um, the Acorn or the Night Fury or whatever. So hopefully I'll post a GitHub later with some information, but feel free to join me and to talk about it. We'll see how it goes. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope I stream soon. I may stream tomorrow. We'll see what happens.